Hey guys, I'm Shrek, and today on Shrek Airsoft, I'm going to be unboxing, installing this Wolverine bolt in into this slam firing JG Bar 10, and then I'm going to bench test it. The bolt in comes from Wolverine Airsoft in this blister pack, and I went ahead and pre opened these things here at the top because they're kind of hard to do. But you can see it will fit the Tokyo Marui, the JG Bar 10, which is what I have, the Airy Striker, and SR Silverback, and other, I'm not really sure what the other is, but it fits these four systems. So open up the blister pack, and we have this nice little box here. Let's see what we have in here. All right, so I got my warranty card. Got this nice little sponge here to protect everything. Here is the bolt in. I got this nice patch. An extra set of O-rings for when I need to rebuild it. I got the piston nozzle. And I got the hose and I got the bolt in adapter that fits into the bolt in and I also have the adapter that fits into my HPA system. So let's go ahead and install. So here's my JG Bar 10, slam firing. And to start, there is two bolts here on the bottom on either side of the magazine well. And all we're gonna do is just take a hex wrench and go in here and pull these bolts out. After those two bolts are taken out, you can move the stock from your receiver and you just grab it and it just separates cleanly like that. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to, I like to go ahead and remove the barrel and there is a little Phillips bolt right here that should just come right out. And the barrel and screws like this. Next step is I'm going to remove this trigger guard here. It has one Phillips head screw on it. And it just pops out like that. Here's your trigger assembly here. And here is the bolt, which you cannot remove until you remove the trigger assembly. And again, there are just a couple of small Phillips head screws in here. And now we can remove the bolt. We need to remove this nozzle. Easiest way to remove this nozzle is just take a small 90 degree hex wrench and put it in one of the holes there. Use the nozzle as leverage and you can loosen it and then get it off the rest of the way. The, uh, the piston in here is held in place by a spring. So be ready to catch that when it comes flying out. In this case, it didn't come flying out. So let's take a close look at the trigger assembly. The way people show it online is you take a flathead screwdriver and you push it into this little L-shaped piece right here and use the screwdriver and you pop it out. You really don't have to do that. If you just take off the whole trigger assembly, I mean, it's really easy. It just has just a couple of little bit of uh, a Phillips head screws. It comes right off. And this little L piece right here, it just actually just pops right out, just like that. So you don't have to worry about um, maybe messing up your trigger assembly. Here's the sear pin right here. I have been told, I don't know how true this is, that this sear pin uh, actually wears and this bolt in will start slam firing also. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do have an extra sear pin just in case. So this little piece slides up in through here. 
and it connects with the hole, the big hole here on the bolt hem through this slot. So let's go ahead and get my assembly and we'll go ahead and put this whole thing together. So how this thing goes together is actually pretty simple. You have your hose and you have this little adapter here. And this adapter fits inside a hole on the back of your bolt. So if you look, there's a large enough hole for this to slide into and you turn it over, it's a small hole. Now this slides down with the big hole up inside your piston and it should go all the way to the back. You have to make sure that that big hole lines up with this slot on the outside of your piston. Now what's happening with mine is I slide it all the way down. It doesn't fit all the way down into the bottom like it's supposed to. And according to the instructions, this is actually quite common. I have a little file here. And according to the instructions, all I have to do is just file away a little bit at the top. And that should be able to get that to slide all the way in. So, only thing I'm worried about is these little filings here getting inside and messing up my, my bolt in. So I'm gonna be very careful with this. All right, let's see if it'll fit. Yep, that did it. The instructions were right. Just a little bit of filing off the top of this edge and around the edges of this slot and is able to slide right in. So let's go ahead and assemble everything together. Once the piston assembly is in, if you take the bolt handle and you slide it around, you can actually see the end, the big hole that this slides into. And we wanna make sure that lines up with the trigger. Now you'll notice on the trigger, there is the sear pin that fits in this big slot here and then we have this little tab here that fits on this tab. It only goes in one way. You have your two bolt holes here and they slide, it just slides in like so. Now on your screws, you just put them back into place. Do not over tighten these two screws here. You over tighten these two screws, you strip them out and it's heck trying to find a replacement. Next, we're gonna put the nozzle on. Nozzle just slides into place. Again, don't over tighten. Use your 90 degree hex wrench. Tighten it down just a little bit. Now, what I want to do, and this is the hard part, is I wanna line up that hole from the bolt M with this square hole we here have on the piston, or excuse me, on the trigger assembly. And this just slides in and it should just click into place. But right now I'm gonna need a screwdriver to do that. So I said I needed a screwdriver. Actually what I meant was a flashlight. I'm gonna use the flashlight, look down in there and I'm gonna get this. All right, so that's fairly well lined up. Now, according to the instructions, this just slides in and should pop in place. And that's exactly what it did. So let's see how this works. And it is a short stroke. Oh, that's outstanding. So according to the instructions, it's better for this to go down this side of your rifle. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my trigger assembly.
And then this next part is actually really important. So what we're gonna have to do is adjust just the barrel, how far it screws in, so that we get a full stroke um, out of the piston. Here, I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and over tighten it. I'm gonna tighten it all the way down. All right, so the barrel is screwed in as far as I can into the piston receiver. And you notice what happens is when I try to slide this forward, I can't, I can't seat the bolt handle in there at all. So get it to this point and then unscrew it one turn. Still can't put it in. So just keep unscrewing it one turn until, until the bolt seats. And then when it does, line these three holes up and you can put the screw back in that holds the barrel in place. Next step, reinstall the stock. But before I put this entire upper receiver here into the stock, I'm gonna want to drill a quarter inch hole through here so that I can get the feed line through it so it would be easier to attach to my regulator. So what I did was I drilled a hole directly through the center of this piece and then I used a screwdriver and just popped it all the way off. You'll notice there's like these four little supports in here and I drilled right down through the center of the supports. I wanted it in the center because I'm a little anal like that. However, um, I suggest if you're not anal like me, try drilling it right here. That way you'll bypass these four supports right here and it won't be as big a mess as what I had. But right now what I got to do is I got to take this feed line and I got to feed it down a little hole right in through here down and through here so we can put the whole thing together and then I can snap this back on. So now the issue we have is taking the feed tube and putting it down through this half inch square hole, feeding it all the way down through the stock into here. And try as I might, I was sticking this hose through that hole and I could not get it to come out through this hole. So what I come up with was just take a piece of brass wire and straighten it out and just slide it in. And you'll see, it comes right out the hole fairly easily. So what I did then was I took the wire and I shoved about two, uh, two inches of it up inside the hole and then I took a piece of duct tape and wrapped it around to secure it in place. And then I gently fed my feed tube through that hole and pulled it out with the wire. And it worked perfectly. Now according to the instructions, this feed line should go to the left side of the trigger like this. So keeping that tight, we'll slide this in. And there's a little tab right here that puts into place. And then when you push the stock down, it actually clicks pretty loud. But don't be afraid, that's the way it works. You have two screws, you have the short screw, short screw goes up front. Long screw goes in the back. And we need to put the cap on. And 
it's held in place by friction and that works. So now let's test it out here. And now I think we should bench test it. So I have my JG Bar 10 with the Wolverine bolt in installed. I have it hooked up to a storm regulator with a 3000 PSI 13 cubic inch Vulcan tank. And to start with, I want to dry fire it just a little bit uh, to see if the addition of uh, high pressure air has anything to do with the bolt pull. Pulls back the same, but there is a little tension when you, uh, when you push it forward. Not too bad. That is loud. I'm gonna have to put a silencer on the end of this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put a magazine in here with uh, dot 43s and I have my chrono and I want to chrono it and compare it to my Wolverine bolt that I have in my other gun uh, to see any differences. Okay, got the magazine in, safety goggles, hat. Let's go ahead and put a round in. Really easy. That's very smooth. And it is a lot quieter with the round in it when I shoot it. All right, so I got my chrono here. I got it set for 43s. Let's see what it does. All right. Whoa, I'm showing three joules, 387.5 FPS. And I'll tell you right now, my Wolverine bolt, I'm getting 2.44 joules, and I think I'm shooting right around 280 FPS. So let's see how consistent this is. I'm gonna put about five rounds through it and I'll tell you what the FPS is. At that time it was 386.6. 384.1, 2.948 joules. All right, 389.2 FPS, 3.026 joules. jammed up a little bit. I think I double fed. Yeah, I double fed. Hey, got a problem. There we go. It did double feed. I pulled the bolt all the way back and two BBs came out. So let's try it again. Hopefully that won't be an issue. And it actually might have been my problem. Maybe I didn't pull the bolt all the way back. Uh, 290, 1.6 joules. That's kind of odd. All the way back. All right, 385.6, 2.97 joules. Three eighty-five point seven, two point nine seven two joules, and we'll fire it one more time here. Three eighty-four point three, two point nine five joules. So it's fairly consistent, with the exception of that double feed. And probably what happened is I probably had two BBs in the barrel, and that's probably why I had that two hundred ninety FPS. But for the most part, this thing is really consistent. Uh, two hundred, two hundred eight dollars with shipping from. Uh, Airsoft Atlanta, you can find the Wolverine Bolt M, you can find them on Evic, and all over the internet. I've even seen them on Amazon. So for the money, I think this is pretty good. All right, so the next video, I'm gonna take it out, and we're gonna do a field test. We're gonna test the accuracy and consistency. So I have a couple videos up here for you guys to watch also, and if you enjoyed this video, if this really helped you out, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. So if we're ever on a field together, guys, I'll be looking for you in my scope. Shrek out.